Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Anime King 2, and today I'm going to be giving you part 3 of What If Naruto Was an Exile Saiyan, trained by Vados. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual, share this to all of your friends in social media platform, and also, guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the other channels Anime King, Anime King 3, and Anime Prince, guys, which I post What If on every single day for you guys to enjoy. And also remember if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice, yes, four channels. And also guys, comment down below and tell me if you're new and remember to turn on the bell notification to see exactly when I post on all the channels. So yeah, without further ado, wasting more time on these we jump right into this new episode. Begin now guys. So the last spot we left off, Vados and the Supreme Kai was watching Naruto as they watched him for a while until he returned back to Champa. While that was going on, Naruto had sent something but he wasn't sure what it was, something was watching him but no it was gone. Some time passes Frost arrived. Frost distributed enough energy to wipe away the planet completely, however Naruto countered the attack easily as Frost then came down. As he gave Naruto one more chance to join his organization, but as usual, Naruto refused. That then caused a battle to happen between them. Frost thought that he had the upper hand, however, Naruto did not even need to transform as he proceeded to destroy Frost's pride. He squashed his pride to make sure he understands that he stood no chance against him as Naruto allowed him to live, to show him that he was worthless compared to him. So, with that, a few months pass. It was then that Naruto made contact with Kale and Khalifla once again. As the one that answered was Khalifla, Naruto was rather upset No, he was pissed off when he heard what they were doing. As the both of them had joined a criminal organization and the things they were doing for money, he didn't like it one bit but Khalifla shouted at him, telling him that he didn't understand, he didn't know what they were doing here to survive, so he had no right to judge them. As Naruto was against it though, she told him to go and screw himself basically. Before she destroyed the friendship bracelets that Kayla had gotten for them, she destroyed them right in front of his face. As Naruto was angry and heartbroken as he hung up the call. Sometime later, someone came to visit him. It was an alien from another planet. As he was here to teach Naruto, hearing about the things that he wanted to teach him, Naruto had to fight a darker half of himself first, in his spiritual self. However, he was able to overcome it and his power skyrocketed because of that. He was able to learn instant transmission and several other things. As three years passed by, Champa had spoken to Vados and told her to keep an eye on Naruto, just watch him until something happened, because Champa had this bad feeling that some idiot was gonna cause a cataclysmic battle between all universe that might end up destroying them all. He didn't know where this sense of permanence come from but he felt it. While that was going on, there was a space pirate heading towards Namek to get his wishes from the Dragon Balls. A rather powerful individual. Three more years passed as Naruto continued to train and he got stronger beyond the wildest imagination. He was now 17 years old as he was able to awaken Super Saiyan 2 as he was able to fully master the form by staying in it. As for Kale and Khalifa, the two girls did not like the separation. However, Kale now understand that Naruto would never aside with what they were doing so they had to let him go despite knowing him for a majority of their life now as she really didn't like it but still, he would not agree with any of their choices. As for the 17 year old Naruto, it turns out that his former teacher was sent there by the Supreme Kai to make him stronger as the Supreme Kai had a good interest in Naruto as he sent the alien back to the other world because he was dead. A powerful warrior not by strength but by techniques as Naruto learned spiritual control as he's only gotten 10 times as stronger. So with that out of the way. Naruto decided to go on his journey now, as he made his way towards Namek. Using the instant transmission Naruto got there he saw there was nothing but chaos. 
It turns out that the criminal space pirate that came here and asked for the Dragon Balls, however, they couldn't find the last one. However, that was because of Naruto he saw that they weren't using them except for the wishes for him, so he hid one of them, knowing that something like this might happen. But he told him to not to worry because he would go and handle this, as he powered up to Super Saiyan before, shot in towards mid space. So, yeah, guys, basically, let's be left off. You guys can switch across the place to yourself, and yeah. Without further ado, what do you say begin? Now guys, we begin this episode in space. My lord, there is an attack coming straight for us. One of the soldiers shouted out, How strong is the attack? The leader asks. Our best sensor on the fleet says it has a power level of 500. It's not much, but it can still damage a ship. Let it hit. We can just repair the damage. The Namekians are weak. We do not have to worry about their petty attempts to try and take us out. As you wish, my lord, the soldier said. Back on Namek, as Naruto felt no change in the enemy's power level, they thought he was just a normal Namekian, so he decided to ramp it up a bit. Majestic grenade, said Naruto. The small attack exploded in the atmosphere, eviscerating the ship. After the attack was done, all you could see was a giant rainbow in the sky with sparks coming down. However, there was someone flying straight towards him from it here. Must be the leader. He has a decent power level, but I can tell it's suppressed. Might have to transform into Super Saiyan again. The man landed and Naruto could tell that he was strong. His skin was teal. He had orange hair. He wore a suit, but the top was open. Enough to show off his entire chest. He was wearing white pants with yellow boots. He was wearing a purple headband. And a red sash over his left shoulder. So, who are you? said Naruto. My name is Kogu. Now you will tell me where the Namekian that just took out my entire fleet of soldiers is. I am in no mood to sit around and talk, Kogu said. Well, you won't find the Namekian that took out your fleet because it wasn't a Namekian. It was me that took out your entire fleet, said Naruto. Before you go on on a whole tyrant, saying that it can't be me because I'm just a child, let me get a few points across. 1. I'm 17 years old. Number 2. All the Namekians around here are dead. Last but not least, since my power level right now and you will see that I am right, said Naruto. Kogu took out what to be a scouter as he read Naruto's power level. At first he wasn't worried. This scouter seemed to be rather advanced as he was able to match Naruto's power level deceit at 9 trillion. He's a strong one. How come I didn't meet him sooner? As a thought came to Kogu. You seem pretty strong for your age, he said. How about joining me? In my quest to rule over all the planets, us together would be unstoppable. No one would even try to oppose us. So what do you say? Would you join me in my quest to rule the world? Or will I have to kill you where you stand? Asked Kogu. Neither of those would be happening, said Naruto. I won't join you, and you won't kill me because I'm stronger than you. I've taken out your entire fleet, so I'll only ask this once. Leave this planet peacefully, or I'll kill you, said Naruto. I am not leaving until I have that final Dragon Ball, Kogu said. Well, you won't find it since I'm the only one that know where it is. Now leave, said Naruto. Then I guess I'll have to force you to tell me where it is, Kogu said. The moment he stopped talking, he flew towards Naruto. However, Naruto shot forward as well. The both of their fists connected. However, Naruto dropped his fist, making the man power push him forward. He then slammed a fist in his chin snapping his head up before he spun and slammed a kick in his chest. Kogu was sent sailing as he smashed right into a mountain leaving an imprint of himself. Kogu removed himself as he wiped his face spitting out some blood. He only seemed to get more pissed off that he was bleeding. Okay you little brat, I'll admit you got me on that one but playtime is over. He then started to power up. His blue skin turned green as his clothing was ripped However, his red sash remained perfectly unharmed. His speed decreased, but his power increased though by a lot. As Naruto felt his power, the both of them were equal in base power as Naruto powered up. To his max limit in his base power, a white aura flickering around him. I hope you're ready for round 2, said Kogu. As Kogu flashed in front of him, Naruto brought his arms up. The fist slammed right into his guard and threw him back. Okay, I was wrong, said Naruto as he floated mid-air. His speed increased just as much. That power though. The power behind his punch, my arms are still tingling. 
Noodle Leg was then grabbed as he smashed hard in the ground by Kogu as he grunted in pain. Kogu wasn't done yet, there was a hell Naruto upside and down and started to slam fists into his gut. As Naruto spat out spit before Kogu threw him away. As Kogu ran straight after Naruto instead of flying after him, he was soon running right next to Naruto while Naruto was being thrown back. He then blurred away. As Kogu appeared behind him and knee him right in the back, as Naruto winced out in pain, Kogu then kicked him straight up in the sky. He flew up and slammed another kick, throwing Naruto straight up. He then flashed above Naruto as he started to drive, hammer fist inside Naruto's guts before he blasted him down towards the ground and kicked to the face. As Naruto was still falling, Kogu charged up a massive energy blast as he then let loose. The blast connected and eviscerated the side of the mountain with Naruto. Kogu then started to release key blasts after key blasts. As he stood there, high and mighty, I can't believe I was worried about this brat. I guess the sculptor was wrong. There is no doubt that he's dead. But it doesn't matter. I'll tear this entire planet apart for the Dragon Ball. I will find it. I'm afraid that won't be happening. Kogu froze in shock. As he couldn't believe what he just heard from behind him. How? How did you survive that? That attack is my strongest. It has never failed me before, said Kogu angrily. Well, I survived because I'm stronger than you. I could have ended this fight the moment I wanted, but... I wanted to see you at your full power. You do pack quite a punch, however, it is not enough to beat me, said Naruto. Now let me show you something. You're only the second person to ever experience this in battle. As Kogu backed away from Naruto instantly, as Naruto started to power up. As Kogu tried to scout Naruto power level, however, the scouter exploded as Naruto here turned blonde, spiking out. Playtime is over, said Naruto. Kogu gritted his fist. You think this will scare me, you little brat, he said. He snarled in anger as he flew forward. Naruto stood there as Kogu's fist slammed right in his stomach. Kogu then spun and slammed the kick in Naruto's face. He then proceeded to assault Naruto. However, Naruto did not even move an inch. Are you done yet? Kogu looked up with shock as Naruto grabbed his arm before he snapped it. Kogu cried out as Naruto fist slammed right in his face, shattering his nose. Naruto then appeared and grabbed his face before bringing him down as he slammed his head right through a mountain. As Kogu was on the ground in pain, Naruto left him and threw him in the air before he held out both of his hands as the same rainbow-like technique that he threw towards the ship. However, this time it was in both of his hands. He brought his hand together as they combined. Majestic. Destroy your cannon, said Naruto. The attack spiraled out as it slammed into Kogu who screamed out before it enveloped him and erased him. As Naruto calmed himself down, is he returning back to black? Now that that is over with, he flew off as he went underground in the water, straight towards the bottom. He then found the Dragon Ball as he came back out. He flew to where he sensed their energy as he found Goku and a few other Namekians. As Naruto landed, as they all saw him, at first they were surprised, but they saw that it was the one that saved them. Here's a dragon ball, said Naruto. Thank you so much, Naruto, Kokoro said. Do you wish to stay, so your wounds can heal up? Nah, I need to get going back to Earth, said Naruto. There's something I gotta do. As he waved goodbye before he suddenly teleported out of there. The next day, Naruto was on Earth, as he wanted to find that power that he had tapped into before. As first he powered up to Super Saiyan 2 with ease. Lightning sparkling around him. He then proceeded to reach deep within himself. The whole earth started to tremble as the place was being torn apart. Come on, said Naruto as he kept on pushing. As he had to scream out to the heavens, his hair started to grow longer and longer. As he then pulled as hard as he could before, he screamed on the top of his lungs. The whole planet shaking apart as a bright golden aura swallowed him. As smoke filled everything around him, his voice even sounded deeper as he spoke. That was hard. I can feel the energy drain that this form is taking on my body already. As he floated down from the sky, he moved towards the window of the ship as he checked his reflection. 
His eyebrows were gone. His hair was now all the way down to his waist. And it was a lot darker, a more yellow shade of gold. And he had more static flowing around him. This is awesome, whoa. My voice is all deep and serious. As he released a new transformation. I need some food, he said. With that he flew off. On Champa's planet. Champa was lounging around when he felt the power surge. He stood to his feet and moved towards Vados. He's exerting a lot of power. Do you think he can handle it, Vados? Asked Champa. I am sure he can. If he couldn't, I doubt he would do what he's trying to do. Just then his power level skyrocketed. They were both impressed, but it wasn't enough for Vados to offer him the training yet. He's close, but he's not there yet. Looks like he hit a barrier, but he can't break through it, said Champa. I wouldn't be so sure, Lord Champa. It's going up. He's about to break through it, said Vados. Sure enough on Earth, Naruto broke right through that restriction as he transformed. I told you, Lord Champa, said Vados, amusement in your tone. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I would tell you to grab him, but I want to give him some time to himself. I want him to get used to that power his body. is so strained from it. I would say about six months. As you wish, my lord. Since he's clearly past your expectations, do you want me to stop? Monitoring his power level, asked Vados. Yes, it's not needed anymore. You can go back to your regular duties. Whatever you do anyway, said Champa. As you wish, she said. Back on Earth. Naruto stretch. As he just finished eating, he figured that he'd go and explore some other planets. Making his way to his spaceship, he looked through some of the planets that were close by. Planet Mainai was the closest. It would take him 15 days to get there. Not really knowing anyone there or feeling the power from that distance, he couldn't. So he had to start the spaceship and get moving. 15 days later, Planet Mainai. As Naruto arrived and flew around for a few hours, he thought that the place would be nice, however, it was in. Some kind of war. Just what the hell is going on here, he asked himself. It's a war between our forces and space pirates. But we don't have to worry. We have the Saiyans and Frost fighting with us. Akid said, making Naruto look down. Space pirates, huh? Let me ask you something, kid. How long did Frost show up after the pirates attack? Um, I don't know, the girl said. Maybe a few hours or a day later. Then the Saiyan forces showed up. And some guy named Kaba is leading them. Kaba, huh? And he's fighting with Frost. I'm sorry kid, but you're being played by Frost. He started this war and those are space pirates. Don't worry, I'm gonna take out the space pirates. Then I'm gonna take out the help that Frost has brought. Wow mister, you must be really strong. But I don't think that you're stronger than Frost or Kaba. They're taking out the pirates, with ease. What's your name kid, said Naruto. It's Sala, she said to him. Well Sala, let me tell you something that no one else knows. I've already met Frost when I was about your age, said Naruto. As he flew off, the girl eyes went wide. Wow, he must be really strong. On the battlefield, as Naruto arrived to see Frost was fighting, but he wasn't doing any damage. He was just tapping them and they were falling down. As Naruto fired several energy blasts and killed all the men on the ground that was faking. Who are you, Frost said. Why are you killing them? I already had them killed. Oh please, Frost, don't play with me. I've already seen you barely touching them. I know you don't want to lose your man, but now I'm here. You're gonna lose a lot of your men. Who are you, Frost said angrily since he was busted. Oh, you don't remember me? Well, I did defeat you before I hit puberty, said Naruto. Frost stepped back. No, you, you, you can't be him. Yes, I am him. And I'm gonna ruin your plan by going after your man, even the ones that are fighting on the good side as pretend. As Naruto flew off, damn it, he's gonna ruin everything. Frost flew off as well. Naruto appeared. The pirates that worked for Frost were dropping like flies. At first, Sane and Kaba were happy that Naruto showed up, but that happiness turned to rage as he started to attack Frost men that were on their side. Kaba had enough as he flew forward, a fist aimed towards Naruto, however, Naruto caught it with ease. Who are you? Why are you doing this, said Kaba? I'm ending this fake war, said Naruto. All these men that claim to be the good guy are just a part of the same group that you're attacking right now. You fell for their little scheme, now you're destroying a plant and killing innocent people. That has nothing to do with this war. You're wrong. We're protecting this planet, Kaba said. You're all foolish. It's a shame what the Saints have become. Being so easily tricked. I'm glad I was exiled if I wasn't. I might have ended up just like you. 
someone that is easily persuaded by a smile and an instant tone. You're a disgrace to the Sadala, Defense Forces Kaba, said Naruto. Huh, how do you know me? I know all about you. You were given special training because of your dream to become the leader of the Sadala, Defense Forces. Let me tell you something I don't know why. King Bordos was so high on you. Your power level was weak and you have nothing to show for all that training that you got. Wait, exile? There is only one saying that has ever been exiled. You must be him. But you shouldn't even be alive. I heard that you were sent to planet Earth. And no one should survive on that planet, said Kaba. Well, I obviously survived, said Naruto. Be that as it may, you know the rules of an exile saying. If you've interfered with anything that has to do with Sadala, defense forces, you are to return to Sadala and King Bordos will decide if you live or die. Oh, I know all about the rules. It will be good to see his old ass again, said Naruto. Watch what you say about King Bordos. A saying said as he charged towards Naruto. Naruto turned and finger flicked him away. Kabo was shocked. How? How did you do that? He's the second strongest in my army. Then I guess they're all weak, said Naruto. That is when Frost appeared. Kaba, he's taking out all the enemies in my man. What do you suggest that we do, asked Frost. He's not gonna stop, so we have no choice but to fight him. After that, he will be returned to Sadala with us. So don't kill him, said Kaba. Like I said, you're easily persuaded. Now, of course, I will be heading back to Sadala. However, I'm going in my own ship. As for fighting me, none of you stand a chance in hell. Frost, I have already beaten you. Kaba, your power level is pathetic, compared to mine. All I want to do is to end this war by taking out the enemy, and that is what I'm gonna do. Frost flew forward as he slammed the fist in Naruto's face. The members were shocked as Naruto did not even budge before he gripped Frost's arm and threw him right into Kaba, knocking the both of them away. He then flew around for about 30 seconds. Every single enemy was taken out within the span of 30 seconds. As Frost and Kaba came back, as you can see, the war is over and I'll be returning back to Sadala to get this over with. I'll see you there, Kaba and Frost. It was nice seeing you again, said Naruto, before he flew off towards his ship. As everyone stood there, couldn't believe in that. That just happened. As a child walked over towards Kaba. Um, excuse me, but is the war over, she said. Yes, it is. The enemy has been defeated. But you lost a lot of people from your side. Are you sure that we've won? Ask the child. Yes. I'm sure, said Kaba. As soon as he said that, a loud cheering went on. As Frost and Kaba was lifted in the air and cheered. The only person that did not cheer was Sala, little girl that Naruto had spoken to. She tried telling the truth, however, they would not listen. The truth will come out about this war one day, she said, as she walked away. With Naruto. As Naruto set course for Sadala, the trip will take two and a half months, but he wasn't complaining. He could have reached it in no time with instant transmission, however, he wanted the train. Next stop home, he said, as he made his way towards the training room. As he would use these two and a half months, very well. With Frost, he was pissed off. He has become even stronger than last time. I will not stand for this. I should be the strongest in the universe, not him. Next time, I will end his life, Frost said, really pissed off. Meanwhile, with Vados and Champa, as they were waiting for a meeting to start, as Champa was bored. He shouldn't have come since it was optional for Gods of Destruction to show up. However, he did. He has done it again, Lord Champa, said Vados, in a whisper to Champa. Good. It seems he's getting used to the strain now. How much has he progressed? asked Champa. Not much, but a slight improvement. I sense him moving right now, so he must be traveling through its space. I'm guessing he's exploring other planets. Should I still offer him the training in six months? Yes, I'm sure he will agree to it. Besides, he wouldn't say no to his mother figure, said Champa in a teasing tone. However, Vado simply jumped onto it. <laughs> I guess you're right. No one wants to disappoint your mother. Champa was surprised that she did not try to deny it this time. For years, he's been teasing her about treating Ruhi like he was her own child, as he knew that she would take him clothes over the couple of years when he would grow out of them and bring him food when he didn't eat most of the time while he was training or he ended up falling asleep. And sometimes she healed his wounds after a brutal training regime that Naruto went through. However, she always constantly denied. What's going on, Vados? You usually argue with me on this, he said. I did it merely for entertainment, I guess. It's easy to frustrate you. And it's rather amusing, she said with a giggle. Now, be quiet. The meeting's about to start. Back with Naruto, 
He powered down as someone was calling. Accepting the call, it was Bordos. Naruto, what is this I hear about you interfering with? Kaba and his troops doing a war. I was ending a war that should not have been happening in the first place, said Naruto. The war was a setup for money. The guy that started it, I fought him before. He used his own army to invade the planet and then arrived to fight back against them. Kaba was easily persuaded and joined him in the fight. I was just doing the right thing, said Naruto. Be that as it may, you still violate protocol as an exile saying. You know that you have to return to Sadala for a hearing, right? said Bordos. Yes, I know, said Naruto. Actually, I'm on my way right now. I'll be there in about two and a half months, said Naruto. Very well, when you arrive, I'll have you stay at the palace. Word got out about what you did and other saints are not happy. As Naruto merely shrugged, he wasn't really worrying about them. I'll see you when you arrive, said Bordos. As Naruto simply returned back to his training, it's not like they could force him to do anything if he decided that he didn't want to do it, after all. He was stronger than everyone there at the moment. Time skipped two and a half months later. I guess Bordos forgot to tell them I was coming, said Naruto as he got off the ship. He exited the ship and once people got to look at him, they instantly recognized him, after all. They believed that he was the one that transformed and rampaged through the city and destroyed an entire squadron. Hey look, it's a traitor. Get away. We don't want you here, another one said. Everyone step back, we don't want him to go. On another rampage, another saying shouted out. As they all start to create energy blasts in their hands. However, Naruto looked towards them as he started to raise his power. They started back away in fear. What's wrong, said Naruto. I thought you were going to force me to leave. Create an energy blast in your hands to try and intimidate me. Don't tell me just because I raised my power level. You're scared. Come on, why don't you fire it off? I dare you to send Naruto as he held out his hand. None of them moved though they were all too scared and they didn't want to die. As Naruto simply walked as they all parted, he then channeled before he shot up in the air, blowing all of them away upon his ascent. I see nothing has changed since I've been gone said Naruto as he was in mid-air looking around. As he landed the royal palace as he walked until he reached his destination, as Naruto kicked the large doors open where Bordos was inside. As he stepped in, yo, King Bordos. I'm here, said Naruto. Bordos sighed. Why can't you open the door like a normal person, he said. Meh, normal is boring, abnormal. It's the best thing there is. Hello, Naruto. It's good to see you again. Dr. Prika said. You as well, Dr. Prika. Might I say, you're a lot more beautiful in person, said Naruto. If it wasn't for the fact that I'm exiled, I would take you home and see how long you could last with me, said Naruto, causing the beautiful doctor to blush. Naruto, stop flirting with her. She's 22 and she has a boyfriend already. Bordo said, pinching his nose. Fine, spoiled sport, said Naruto. By the way, I'm 18 now. My birthday was last month. And just because she's 22, doesn't really mean anything. Well, she still has a boyfriend, so stop. As Naruto sighed before he shrugged his shoulders. My liege, why is he here? Wasn't he exiled 11 years ago? One of the elite guards spoke up. Didn't I tell you why you had to come here, said Bordos. No, you didn't, my liege, the guard said. It seems like your age is starting to show, said Naruto, forgetting things already. Maybe you should have the doctor do a check on your brain. It might be time for you to step down as well, said Naruto. Naruto, shut up. As for why he's here, he interfered on a mission that involved the Sadala, defense force. So now he needs to have a meeting with me, the council. And the head of the mission, Kaba. Wait, so you're the same that everyone's talking about? That feel like he's all high and mighty? You're lucky I wasn't on that mission. I would have killed you on the spot, the guard said. Oh please, none of you can hold a candle to me, said Naruto. Not even the king himself. I surpassed him before I even hit puberty. Tch, <laughs> big talk kid. My power level is at 10 million, and I'm in my 20s. The only person stronger than me is King Bordos, the guard said. Well, well, said Naruto. My king, he said, looking towards Bordos. I'm sure that you would like a demonstration to see how strong I've gotten. Yes, I would like to see that, Bordos said. Well then, said Naruto, if I may. As the sculptures are activated, as Naruto starts to power up, his power hit 100 million before the sculptures exploded. But, but how? Y you're just a kid. The guard said in shock. No one has ever been that strong in the history of the same race. I am on a planet by myself, all I do is train day in and day out. I've almost killed myself at least several times, said Naruto. Bordos raised his hand, stopping. 
The guard firm asks another question. The meeting will not be until tomorrow. Kaba will be back later tonight. You're welcome to stay in the palace, Bordo said. Yeah, yeah, I know, said Naruto as he walked off. Remember, you're in the palace. Yeah, yeah, said Naruto. As Naruto made his way, it didn't take long for someone to start to follow him. As Naruto vanished, a feminine voice spoke up. Where, where did he go? As she was looking around until, I'm behind you. She jumped and looked around. Why are you following me, said Naruto. I haven't seen you around here, and I was curious who you are. That's because I don't live here. Now stop following me, said Naruto. It may just cost you your life. As he then flew off. Why does he look so familiar? It's like I've seen him before, the girl said to herself before she walked away. The next day. The next day, Naruto slammed the door rather roughly. As everyone turned towards him in the council room. Naruto, what's wrong? It looked like you didn't sleep last night. Dr. Prika said to him. That's because I didn't sleep last night. Dr. Prika, I know that you're needed here for the mental evaluation, but our rooms are right next to each other. Can you keep it down the next time your boyfriend comes in? And you both go at it, said Naruto. Dr. Prika looked at him strangely. But I was in my room last night. I pulled an all-nighter to study. The case for today, said Dr. Prika. So if that wasn't you, then who was in your room last night, said Naruto. Well, my boyfriend was supposed to be in there alone, she said. As she seemed rather upset and angry. Dr. Prika, would you wish to head home to deal with this? We can read their evaluation of Naruto herself. The council member asked her. No, it's fine, she said. I can just deal with that later. Okay then, let us start the meeting. Kaba, since you were there longer, you can have the floor first, said the king. Thank you, King Bordo, said Kaba. As you all know, I was sent out to Planet Mane with a platoon of saints to help stop the war. We arrived and we were told that it was a group of space pirates. We joined up with the infamous Hero Frost, who has been known through the galaxy. That has been helping to put a stop to multiple wars. Everything was going good until Naruto showed up. He claimed to be putting an end to a war that I agree should not be happening, but he started to take out the enemy, then he turned his sights towards the men that were fighting alongside me and Frost. We asked him to stand down and he attacked a Saiyan warrior, as for me and Frost as well. He claimed that I was easily persuaded by Frost and that I was a disgrace to the Sadala, defense force, and that he was glad that he was exiled. Kaba finished up. Is all of this true, Naruto? Attacking a Saiyan during a mission has severe consequences, said Bordos. Hell no it's not true, said Naruto. Well me taking out all the enemies is true. That including everyone that is not a Saiyan on their side. Yes I wiped them all out but that is because Frost started this war. The hero that you see is nothing but a joke. A false persona. He is the one that start these wars and then end them very quickly. Has anyone ever thought why he is in the right place at the right time during the war? He created these wars and then profits from them. He is the leader of the space pirate gang going around. Causing all of these wars, said Naruto. How can you say that about someone as great as Frost? One of the council members interrupted. Because I fought Frost when I was 11 years old and I easily beat him. If he's such a good guy, why was he trying to sell Planet Earth to Taro? Last time I checked, only a space pirate or a madman would do something like that. Also, for my evidence when I arrived, I was informed by a girl no older than 8 that Frost arrived hours after the war started. That is not a coincidence. As for attacking a Saiyan, yes I did, but this scrawny little bastard right here forgot to mention that the Saiyan attacked me first. All I did was simply finger flick him away. He didn't mention that he and Frost also tried to fight me and they were easily dealt with. Do you have your witness with you today? Bordos asked as he looked towards Naruto. What? Hell no, said Naruto. Why the hell would I bring an 8 year old who just witnessed a war to an unknown planet to answer a bunch of questions? But I already know that the council has your mind made up. They decided that I was guilty before this meeting even started. They don't want their golden child to look like a failure in the eyes of the same race. Especially if it was against the exile Saiyan, who was found innocent with all the charges that were placed against him. Yet there was no invitation to allow me to return back to Sadala. You and Dr. Prika don't know how to contact me yet. I receive absolutely nothing. So I'm not here to waste much time, so can you go on with it, said Naruto. Well, you have shown no evidence that what you claim is true. So we will let Kaba decide your punishment. A council member spoke up. How can you people say that he's guilty? It's on file that he fought Frost. And King Bordos was there when I told him what happened. His mental evaluation clearly showed that he's not a threat to anyone. Dr. Prika said, 
those files were somewhat lost when they were supposed to be filed. Now Kaba, what will his punishment be? He has to fight me, right here and right now. He wins, he get free. Of all of his charges, he loses. He has to stay here in a cell for 40 years plus, pay a heavy fine. Is that acceptable? A council member asks. Clearly since I can't overrule your guilty decision due to me having close ties with Naruto, then I had no choice but to accept. Naruto felt like he wanted to laugh, as he found this all rather amusing. It's not like they could actually put him in a cell but this, just what the hell was Kaba thinking? So right here and now said Naruto. Kaba nodded, BAM! Kaba was unconscious on the ground. So do I win said Naruto, as he stood on the podium. Everyone shot their head towards him. What, what just happened? The king was shocked. He didn't even see him move. As he found it really amusing that Kaba, even after he felt what Naruto's cape love, decided to challenge him. Yes, you may leave, Naruto. You are clear of all your charges. Sweet. I'll be in my room sleeping, said Naruto. I'll leave first thing tomorrow morning. I don't want to stay here any longer than that. Once he was gone, they spoke up. King Bordos, how did that child get so strong? He was born with a power level of 25, and if I'm correct in my assumption, no disrespect, he's stronger than you. He's been stronger than me since he was 7, and I'm not talking about his power level. He was able to live for the glances and hatred that everyone has for him on this planet, just because he was born with a tail, and he was able to bear all of it. If anyone else here was in his shoes, they would have long since transformed in that giant ape and wiped all of us out. I was a coward when he came to his exile, however. It seemed to have paid off for him though. He seemed calm and despite everything his power level did not spike once. I believe he's much powerful than he's letting on. The question is how much stronger is he really? Time skip at Naruto's room. Naruto just stepped out of the shower as he stretched. As he made his way when he heard a knock. He made his way towards the door. As he opened to see that it was... Well, this was a surprise. Dr. Prika, what are you doing here? I couldn't sleep. May I come in, she said. Sure, said Naruto as he had a towel wrapped around his waist. As she sat on his bed. So what's on your mind? You were right, she said. It's the whole situation with my boyfriend. We've been together since we were 17, and he's been cheating on me the entire time. Aren't saying supposed to be together with one life partner. How could he do this to me, she said. I think that only apply if the partner the saying is with is the one they're supposed to be for the rest of their life. If you two were meant to be forever, then he wouldn't have cheated, and he wouldn't have blushed when I said I would take you back to my room and see how long you last. But don't worry, said Naruto, you're just 22, I mean you're still young, rather attractive and beautiful. You'll find your soulmate eventually, said Naruto. I guess you're right, she said, I should have seen this coming. You know, we never actually slept together, we barely even kiss. Sometime I wonder if it was a real relationship. This is really embarrassing, but... I'm still a virgin, she said. You must think that is weird. Here I am 22, and still a virgin. Everyone else that know think it's weird. Why would that be weird, said Naruto. Well, I am still one. Granted, I've been living in isolation for my entire life, so I don't think nothing is wrong with that though. I mean, most people older than you are still virgin. Thank you, she said. But you? I'm surprised that you haven't been with any of the other women in any other planet. I mean, look at you, she said. And with how powerful you are, many women find power more irresistible than anything else. You're telling me that you weren't at least offered the chance to be with someone since you came back. Well, I've been offered, said Naruto. However, those kind of girls are not my thing. Oh, I see. I guess you met the local whores, she said to him. Yeah, I have, said Naruto. As he got up, stepping towards the closet, he then heard something hit the floor. As he slowly turned, she took off her lab coat to show the black bodysuit that she was wearing underneath. As she gave him, this look on her face was a soldier one. You like, she asked. Yeah, I do, said Naruto. You're beautiful, but why me, he asked. Well, it's just like you said, and I would rather my first time be with my soulmate or someone as pure like us. I know we aren't soulmates, but... At least my first time will be with a nice guy like yourself, she said. Are you sure about this, said Naruto. Yes, I'm sure. Now jot that towel and come over here, she said. As Naruto did not hesitate, Naruto had a primal instinct. 
Maybe many Saiyans did not have it in this world, however. Maybe it had something to do with his tail, but Naruto can be some kind of a primal beast sometimes. And when it comes to this department, well, seeing that he's never been with a woman before, he wouldn't know that. But know that he's gonna, well, she's gonna know that as well. Time skip. As they went at it like they were primal beasts, Naruto's stamina was seemingly everlasting. She had to get a break several times through. When they were finally done, she couldn't feel her legs. Sorry about your legs, said Naruto. I guess I have to carry you. They were really numb to the touch. Don't worry, trust me, she said. You have nothing to feel sorry about. I loved it. Thank you for last night. I really needed that, she said. No problem, said Naruto, I guess. I need it as well. So need any help getting to the office? No, I'll manage, she said, with a smile on her face. You may have not been my soulmate, but that was amazing. Maybe next time we'll both be. With her a soulmate next time we meet and have a huge family. And she gave him one last kiss. Yeah, I hope so too, said Naruto. You deserve it more than anything, he told her, with a smile on his face. So with that, they parted. As for Naruto, he was able to pinpoint Earth from here. Since in the animals, he quickly held on to his ship as he vanished. Kale and Khalifa arrived about 10 minutes after Naruto left. What the hell was that? How could a power level that strong just disappear that quickly? Said Khalifa. I don't know. But whoever that was, it made our power level look like nothing, said Kale. We can ask King Bordos later. Right now we need to get you to Dr. Aprika so she can check on you. Khalifa, I'm fine. We don't need to come and see her, said Kale. Yes, we do now, come on, said Khalifa. Arriving there, they noticed Dr. Aprika walking with a limp. So, Dr. Aprika, what's up with the limp? Khalifa asks. Oh, it's nothing. I just had a long and rough night. So what can I do for you girls? I haven't seen you two in six years. I need you to give Kale a checkup. Kale, what's wrong? Said Dr. Prika, moving towards her. Her asshole ex-boyfriend convinced her to sleep with him. That was about three weeks ago. And then he broke up with her afterwards. Said Khalifa, she clenched her fists. And she's late. So I want you to check her if everything is okay. Or to see if she's, you know... Oh sure, come with me. I'll give you an ultrasound. Once a stressful few minutes was up. Well, Kale, you're not pregnant. From everything I've checked, you should be fine. Said Dr. Prika. Thank you. They said to her. The phone then rang. Yes, King Bordos. How may I help you? Dr. Prika, is Naruto with you? He was supposed to stop by to sign the paperwork from the council meeting. I heard that you were with him last night, so I figure you might know where he is. Bordos did not realize that. They were in the room. Naruto? Where is he? Where is that son of a bitch? Said Khalifa. Thanks a lot, King Bordos. As for Naruto, I haven't seen him since last night. My guess is that he already left. I saw him this morning leaving his room. But he said that he wants to go and explore the other planets. So I'm guessing that he's on the move. Wait a minute. You were with Naruto last night. And now you're walking with a limp. Holy shit. You slept with Naruto, didn't you? Said Khalifa. I will not confirm what you're talking about. They noticed that Kale had left. What's wrong with Kale? Dr. Prika said. Naruto is a sore subject for her. She used to have a huge crush on him. And when everything happened between us, it really broke her. I guess despite everything, you sleeping with him is more than she can handle. Congratulations, you just broke a girl's heart, said Khalifa. Well, how was I supposed to know that she liked Naruto? You both just up and disappeared seven years ago. Without telling a soul. So excuse me for wanting a night of pleasure after. My boyfriend cheated on me. You can't put the blame on me as far as I know. Naruto was single and so was I. So you can't put the blame on me. As Khalifa grumbled angrily before she walked and bumped her she passed. I'll leave you alone Dr. Prika. Said Bordos as he ended the call. As Dr. Prika made a call. As a person answered. Hey can we talk? Meanwhile. Khalifa tracked Kale down in her room hideout, as she went to go have a chat with her. Kale, how are you doing? You ran out so quickly. Don't worry, I'm fine. I know after everything, I'm not supposed to feel hurt because it's not like anything ever happened between us, but still. I mean, we didn't even know that he was here. And now when I think about him doing all of this, and everything it just made me so angry, 
Say kill. How about we go tonight? Just me and you. You in? Said Khalifa. Yeah, I'm in, she said. Hey, thanks for everything you've done for me, said Kiel. No problems. After all, what are sisters for? Time skip. Three months later. Dr. Prika had called Naruto after he had left. Three months ago. As she told him what happened, he told her she had nothing to worry about. She did not do anything wrong. As for Naruto, he had been training non-stop in his Super Saiyan 3 state. And no, the train was not so bad. He figured that he could master this form in another three months. As Naruto realized that his growth is unnatural compared to other people, and he still haven't tried to use his super ape form. As the same stuff losing his mind and going berserk, he didn't like that. He need to be around someone that could get him out of the state. He didn't want to accidentally blow up the earth. As he was interrupted as Valos appeared, well better known as his mother figure. That is the way she treated him after all. Over the years she had stopped by many many times. Well Champa didn't know the amount of times that she had stopped by. And she left a lot of things for him. And how are you doing today, mother? said Naruto. With a smirk, making her laugh. I'm doing well, Naruto. But I'm not here for a mother and son moment. I'm here for an offer. I have been watching over you, you know that, right? And after meeting you, Lord Champa has taken a great interest in you. So I'm here to give you the opportunity to train under me. Your development so far is astounding, but I can take you even further. So, do you? Yeah, I accept, said Naruto. He knew that she was immensely powerful, like out of anything that he could even imagine. However, hearing this, Naruto was excited. But you're gonna have to give me three months, said Naruto. I have some training I want to complete in three months. That's all I need, he said. I can do that. I'll let Lord Champa know. She was about to say goodbye, wait, said Naruto. Is there something that you need? As Naruto stepped closer, before he hugged her, she was surprised. Before she returned it with a smile on her face. Thank you for taking care of me for these past few years, said Naruto. Never really know my mom, so it was really nice, he said to her. It's no problem, Naruto, she said. I'll see you in three months. And she broke the hug. With a smile on her face, see how much he has grown. As Naruto was now standing at six foot five, and she was standing at six foot one. I'll be waiting, said Naruto, on Champa's planet. As she appeared and quickly wiped her face, she had tears falling from her eyes. He called me mom. She thought to herself. She composed herself before she find him on top of a tree. Lord Champa, I return. As Champa jumped at her sudden arrival, Vados, are you trying to kill me? He said. I wouldn't dream of it, my lord, she said. So where's the boy? Did he decline the training? No, he accepted, but you want me to come back for him. In three months time, he said he has some training he wants to finish up before coming here, said Vados. Hmm, although it's behind schedule, it shouldn't be a problem. Alright, three months it is. Back on Earth, as Naruto was exploring the Earth as he came across something weird. No way. As he picked it up, it was a Dragon Ball. How can Dragon Balls be on Earth, he thought, confused. It wasn't like the Namekian Dragon Ball, it seemed to be stone like someone had turned into stone but the stars were still on it as he wondered why he decided to go to Namek and ask them as Naruto decided to use instant transmission as he arrived towards the elder's house elder Sutta are you in there said Naruto yes I am my boy what can I do for you today asked Sutta as he exited the house were there any Namekians on planet earth before you restored it yes there was one Namekian who was banished due to him being extremely hostile to those on Namek why? Well, because of this, said Naruto as he pulled out the Dragon Ball. Is that what I think it is, said Suta? Yeah, it seemed to be a Dragon Ball, said Naruto. But shouldn't it be a normal stone if there is no Namekians left? Or if the person created dies? Yes, they should be regular boulders. Only thing I can think of is if the Namekian was able to send out an egg and had it resting on Earth. The egg must have hatched by now, so you may not be alone on that planet. If I were you, I will find the hatchling. And get rid of it. It will be a basic copy of the one that was before it. And try to start the same thing. And bring war to the planet once again. Now that I think about it. These were all sitting in a circle like they were specifically collected. I guess he doesn't have much power yet though. Since he couldn't restore Dragon Balls. I'll go and check it out said Naruto. I wish you all the best Suta said. As Naruto appeared back on Earth as he searched. He didn't phone him. But he was not a kid. 
He was a full-blown adult. As Naruto landed, so who are you? I'm Ozak. Now I'm only gonna say this once, said Ozak. Give me back the Dragon Ball or I will kill you. No, I know what you're up to and it won't be happening, you're evil. Trying to plague the world with war once again, but I'll stop you. Please child, your power is nothing compared to mine. I've been preparing and hiding myself. I guess it's time for me to finally reveal myself then. He powered up. His power level reached up to 10 million. Not bad, said Naruto. As he flashed right in front of him. Goodbye. As he blasted his head clean off. I only have 3 months to train before. Mom come back to pick me up, said Naruto to himself. So I can't afford to waste time. As he flew back. As he was going, the Dragon Balls reverted back to stone. 3 months later, Naruto got used to the Ninja Drain. As he was able to fully control his form in Super Saiyan 3, it felt like regular Super Saiyan. As Naruto wondered if there was a way of him keeping his power on the inside while he transforming, because he's expending so much energy, it would be better if he was able to trap that power inside of him and utilize it to his fullest. Vados then appeared right on time. Are you ready? As Naruto got to his feet, yeah. Place your hand on my shoulder and we can take off. Lord Champ has been eager to see you again. Naruto raised the eyebrow. Why? He see greatness in you. He doesn't want you to go to waste. Oh, okay then, said Naruto. Hey, I have a question. When I'm powering up, is there a way of me keeping the engine trapped in my body instead of releasing it out in the world so that it doesn't go to waste? There is. And that is one of the things I'll be teaching you. Also, I've heard about your ape form. I heard that you can only do it in a full moon, so you must require certain waves from the energy of the moon to transform. As they start to vanish, they were moving through some strange vortex as Naruto was behind her holding onto her shoulder. How do you know about my transformation? He said looking around. You forget. Lord Champ has been watching over the universe for a long time now. We saw you transform through my staff. And we've never seen anything like it before. Because we've never seen a Saiyan with a tail before. Yeah. I never go outside or look up in the full moon. I wasn't sure that I would be able to control it so I never did that. I didn't want to risk blowing up the planets. And killing myself in the process, said Naruto. Don't worry. I will be able to assist you in your transformation, she said. Time skip. Chomp a planet. As they arrive as Chompa was sleeping. Hey, I have an idea, said Naruto. Oh, and what would that be, she asked. As Naruto whispered to her. It made her giggle. It should be quite interesting to see, she said. As she used her staff to create what Naruto asked for. As it was a bucket with ice cold water and a rope. As they pulled the rope. As he tipped over, as Champa woke up in a scream, his head flashing around, as Naruto dropped and started to hold his sides. It's good to see your weight now, Lord Champa's Bado said, trying to hold back her laughter. You did this, Champa asked. Yes, my lord, we did, said Bados. Why? I hate water, he said. If you hate water, how do you take a shower and a bath, said Naruto. I'm a god of destruction. I watch over my universe. I don't need to waste my time on silly things like bath or showers. He said as he moved towards them. Dude, that's disgusting, said Naruto. Even mom over here washes up. She smells like raspberry, said Naruto. There's no excuse for you not to wash your ass. Naruto was bumped over the head. Language, Naruto. There will be no swearing. But ass is not a bump. She bumped over the head once again. Alright, alright. I won't say it, said Naruto. Great. Now have a seat. There's a lot you need to know, said Vados. You need to know about the gods, the universe, the Kais, and angels. I thought there was only one universe. Nope, there is 12, there was more. But they were destroyed. What? How could someone destroy an entire universe, said Naruto? They were destroyed because of our leader. His name is Zeno. Our king. He has the power to destroy anything he wants. There was 18 universe, however he destroyed 6 because he was in an unpleasant mood one day. Wait, so you're telling me that you have a man-child who can throw a tantrum and decide to blow up universes? Have you ever thought about getting him a friend? Despite him being a man-child as you call him, King Zeno has great knowledge and wisdom. As for getting him a friend, there is only a few select people that know that he exists, you being one of them now. And besides, no one wants to risk angering him, because he might end up erasing everything. Said Vados. So, if he's so wise and filled with knowledge, why don't he just create himself a friend? I'm sure if he can destroy, he can create. You know Vados, 
that's actually a good point say champa yes it is but that is not what we're here to discuss as you know Naruto, i'm an angel but i'm also champa teacher as well i always knew that you were stronger said naruto from the way you carry yourself so are you like stronger than all the gods yes i'm far stronger than all the gods she said all angels are stronger than the gods of destruction now since there's 12 universes there are also 12 angels I am the angel of this universe, which is universe 6. She then started to list off all the other angels out there. As Naruto sat there and listened, turns out her father was the Grand Priest. He was a right hand man to the king of basically everything itself. Wow, said Naruto. So, were the other angels destroyed as well with the universes? No. The Grand Priest convinced the king not to destroy them, since they are needed for the creation of the other gods. They lost their angel forms and from what I know, they serve under the Grand Priest at the moment. Oh, okay, said Naruto, so what exactly do you do? Well, our rules are to guide and teach the gods of destructions, unusing their abilities and personal etiquette, she said. Okay, I think I'm understanding this better. But what about the rest of gods of destructions? Who are they, he asked. Champa jumped in as he started to list them off. As Naruto sat there and overheard everything that he told him. There was so much more people out there that he even never knew about. So much more stronger people out there. But he wondered though. So who's the strongest angel and god of destruction? Well the grand priest is the strongest angel. As for the strongest god of destruction, Champa. I will leave that one to you to answer. She said with a bit of amusement in her tone. So who is it? said Naruto. Champa grumble. It's Beerus he said. Otherwise known as my twin brother. Well, you once told me that there are three gods stronger than you. So who are the others, said Naruto. It's Belmont and Jean, but the gap isn't as big between us as the one between me and Beerus. I told you, Lord Champa, the only reason why Beerus is so much stronger is because despite him sleeping a lot, he still trained with the Whis, while you on the other hand just lounge around and eat all day. So what about you, said Naruto. What do you do? As he looked at Champa. I overlook Universe 6. My job is to induce natural selecting to develop our universe power. I destroy planets with species that are developing at a slow rate. What said Naruto? Why the hell would you do that? Just because you're developing at a slow rate, why won't you just give them a chance? I bet you destroy so much that you don't even know if they would have developed to become strong. Naruto ducked out of the way from Vado's strike as she was trying to quiet him. But Champa seemed to take no offense to that. I have no other choice he said. I either do that, or King Zeno, erase the entire universe. Unlike my brother who actually take naps for like 50 years at a time, I actually care about my universe. Well that's a stupid rule, said Naruto. So what if they take time to develop? Why doesn't all of you just go and talk to King Zeno, said Naruto. Because everyone is scared of him, said Vados. It was plain and simple. So why don't you just talk to your father, said Naruto, as he looked towards Vados, and make him make a selection with the king as Vados looked towards Champa you know that might be a good idea Champa said well it seems you're full of ideas said Vados yep I really am said Naruto so will I meet any of these other gods maybe in the future I feel there's something big coming said Champa however for now you'll be training with Vados it will make what you did on earth look like child's play Universe 6 warriors have to be strong. Why, said Naruto. I have a feeling that something is coming. I told you that already, said Champa. But I'm not sure what it is. Are you some kind of future seer, said Naruto. No, not really. But this feeling won't go away. So, you have to get stronger. Well then, if you say so, said Naruto. Alright then, when do we get started? Now, she said. As Naruto was pulled away. Where are we, said Naruto as he looked around. At the moment you're in my staff, said Vados. We will begin your training in here. Oh, well then, I... Naruto was cut off as she finger flicked him, as he was sent sailing. A smile came on her face as she slowly went after him. But guys, me and subscribe right here for us next parts and do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, turn on that bell notification as they posted. Bye, I'm off and I'll see you guys soon. Peace, guys.